The sensation over at the giant otters. Breeding these animals in a zoo is rarely successful. The really special thing is, for the first time, the entire family is present for the birth and rearing. Chatka bear mother Masha's cubs are 16 weeks old. They've been allowed to play in the outdoor enclosure for a month. Tobias and Jill are about to leave a tasty surprise for the bear mother that should also interest the little ones. In addition to their normal food, today there's a portion of sweet honey. It's like with us humans. When we were kids, we would watch what our parents are doing and then copy them and watch that. And then it's the same with the little bears here. They see right away when mum tries the honey that you can eat it and that it obviously tastes good too. And so bit by bit, they begin to lick it. It's a question of whether Vanya and Michel, the bear brothers, are going to leave their mother anything at all. Kamchatkas are bears with Russian roots. Only the females rear the young, who do not begin eating solids until they are around five months. But every now and again, Vanya and Misho are already homing in on food and anything else that looks interesting. These rays, with the blue spots on the upper side, are aptly named the blue spotted stingray. So I'm getting the food ready for our offspring, our four month old stingrays. Food for our little half pints is served in the breeding tank. Stingrays have toxic spikes in their tails. So these are our twins, two males. I feed them by hand, carefully. After all, they are stingrays. But their poison wouldn't be fatal for me. Blue spot rays can become 70 centimeters long. Even when they swim around the large aquarium later, they should still eat out of Ina's hand. I've always really enjoyed my time with the rays. They're wonderful, teachable animals. Most people think they just swim around from left to right. One of them buries himself, the other lies on the seabed. But you can really work with them. They learn quickly. When a hand arrives, it's mealtime. We have special species of ray that can be trained. It's really heartwarming. They're really fantastic animals. Blue-spotted rays live preferably on the soft, sandy ground of coral reefs. Young rays also find sufficient food there. They're really hungry. Of course, they're still growing. We give them as much food as they want. After a while, they're swimming more peacefully. As soon as they stay on the seabed, we stop giving them anything. They have to digest all that fish first. The blue-spotted ray is at home in the Indian Ocean between the Red Sea and Australia. The babies hatch from their eggs inside the mother and are born alive. So that was it for those two. They're really full up. As soon as they swim around on the seabed, they're digesting. They're quite happy. <laughs> 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 
snow owls live high up in the north, around the Arctic Circle. The female supplies the young with food. Unfortunately, one of her chicks didn't quite get enough to eat. The tiny thing is now sitting outside of the aviary under an infrared heat lamp. Keeper Volker will rear him per hand. He's not very good looking, but he does have a big mouth, big enough for a whole mouse. Unfortunately, his head has a permanent tilt to the right. The vet's going to look at that now. Now he's going to get a wet mouse. I moistened it especially. You'd be surprised how much fits inside. He gets his liquids from the mice. If they're wet, he can get even more water. He also gets a swig from the syringe. Want some? Yeah, great. Now he's got enough liquid for two hours. Snow owls are very large owls. They can be up to 60 centimeters in size and have a wingspan of one and a half meters and more. You have to bear in mind that an owl has four to five young to look after. The chick that hatches first always gets the most food. It's the strongest and pesters the most. The second chick isn't fed until its older sibling is full. This one hatched last and got the least. The mother always feeds the greediest. He didn't have a chance. Now I'll take him home with me and feed him by hand. I'll do that for around five days and then try and return him to the mother. She can't count how many chicks she has. She just sees a hungry fledgling with an open beak. I hope then he'll be strong enough to demand food without letting his siblings push him aside. Covered with a towel, he thinks his mum is sitting beside him. We don't need a heat lamp, it's warm outside. So, that's was. Vanya and Misho are two perky and well-fed bear brothers. They curiously examine their surroundings. Today, the keepers have distributed honey in different sections of the enclosure, a veritable feast for their mother, Masha. With every centimeter that the 16 kilogram bear children grow, their reach expands accordingly. They develop really fast. The mother's milk is very rich. And when they're born, they're pretty small. And then they have to grow within the shortest possible time. In the wild, they also have to come to terms with possible situations in the local environment, for example, other bears. They could even meet with their father, who hasn't really got the time of day for them. There are all reasons why they have to grow fast and be able to run fast. Vanya gives food a try, although bear cubs suckle for two and a half years. Yeah, they watch what their mum does here and there. They have a quick chew on food or swallow something, but, you know, it's not so bad. At least they learn what they can eat, what they can't. They are already quite keen on honey, too. In the wild, brown bears are known to take long hikes in order to find beehives. But what will they make of the waterfall in the enclosure that Tobias wants to turn back on? Giant otters are one and a half to two meter long predators from South America. In all probability, they will soon become extinct in the rivers of the Amazon basin. With every newborn giant otter, there comes hope of maintaining the species. Our giant otters have five young three male and two female. 
They're now eight weeks old and a great breeding success. Now they're getting some fish and fruit. The parents are permanently busy with the young and badly need a bit of variety. Stress mothers sometimes kill their children or just stop looking after them. Uwe enables her a varied food offer in the hope of helping her to forget the baby stress. Apart from Beanie, the female, her partner Maku and their older children are all in the water. Giant otters are actually very social animals. A couple often lives together for many years with children of several different cohorts. Now these little ones are added to the list. They're being taught how to swim. They're taken out by their parents and siblings and then they have to swim. They have to get used to water and learn to move by themselves. There's always someone there keeping an eye on them and they're constantly complaining. The parents, just as the siblings, are not at all concerned about the quacks of the little ones. That's the caterwaul principle. As long as they can complain, they're all right. They're strong and they can swim. As soon as they go quiet, an adult comes to see if they're okay and takes them out of the water and looks after them. Giant otters are severely threatened because humans still hunt them for their pelts, destroy the rainforests and pollute the rivers. In the zoos, however, it is hard to breed them. The offspring is prone to become sick. Uwe is one of the few zookeepers who has close contact with the otter babies. The really special thing about this is that the whole family is present for the first time for the birth and the rearing. The older siblings are involved from the word go. The daughter was even allowed to watch the birth. She and her mum were together in the box and she watched her little siblings be born. They look after the little ones very well. Giant otters belong to the family of martens. Together with the sea otters, they are their biggest representatives. Big, bigger, huge is not only the solidarity of this cute family, but also Uwe's joy over the fabulous breeding success. Today, the four lion babies receive a visit from the vet. She wants to vaccinate the three and a half month old cats, something the rest of the lion family won't let happen just like that. For this reason, the adults, especially lion mother Tembezi, must be separated from the babies before Adriana and Tony can hold them. Today they're going to be vaccinated against cat flu, cat plague and rabies, two pricks. We're also checking the transponder again. Now we can exchange them without having to anaesthetize the lion babies. Later, Tony won't be able to go in and hold them. We'd always have to use an anaesthetic. Come on, you three. Outside. The vaccination is important, as not only domestic cats can die of typical cat diseases. Except for the mother, everyone is outside. The problem is the young are standing in front of the slider. I don't know how to get Tembezi outside. Tembezi must already know that something is going on. But she doesn't notice that Tony has blocked off her babies at the last minute. Come on, out you go. Made it. All four adult lions are in the open enclosure. On a bad day, that could have gone on for one or two hours, as Tony knows from experience. So, problem solved. 
You need luck on your side if it's to work first go. The young are now separated from their mother and we can get hold of them easily. Now, whether or not it will be that easy remains to be seen. Only male snow owls are almost entirely white. To defend their brood from enemies, they bristle their feathers, hiss as a warning, and eventually they attack. Where is he then? Hey, hey! No escaping through the door. Because it's so bitterly cold in their Arctic Circle homeland, even the feet are densely feathered. Hey, you nitwit. After the pips squeak under the heat lamp, Volker turns to the rest of the family. These are Boo-Boo's two siblings, and at the back is their mum. You can see the difference between them and the little one I just fed. Their eyes are open and they're significantly bigger. Snow Owl Young leave the nest once they are four weeks old. This should be in just a few days. Apart from the indignant father of the little birds, Volker too wishes them the best. If the chicks wander around later on, they could drown. They have no idea what water is. Now they can just walk over the grid and nothing will happen. The little ones are panting. It's warm today. In the Nordic birds' homeland, temperatures are up to around 40 degrees below zero. Dad's sweating too. You can see he's too warm because he's panting with his beak open. With the water, I can at least cool the air a little. In a few days, Falko will return the chick that hatched last to the mother. He hopes that she will look after him as well as she did his two siblings. There's an abundance of offspring in the domestic animal sector. Piglets, chicks, kids, and a donkey foal all keep boredom at bay. Um, our little donkey foal Emil is exactly one week old, to the day, one week. Uh, he's doing well here, gets on really well with the other animals and always follows his mum around like a good boy. He still drinks mother's milk and uh, doesn't eat any solids yet. He is interested in what his mum is doing when she, when she chews on the grass and, and the branches. And maybe he even takes in the smell, but, um, but he won't eat it yet. Emil will continue drinking milk for at least the next six months but will also eat more and more plant food. In the first days of life, the distance between the donkey mare and her foal is rarely bigger than a meter, and still she doesn't show any shyness in front of other animals. Yes, yeah, so we leave out these uh, big heaps of food, but really, in essence, they all eat together. The zebus, the goats, the donkeys, even the mother with her little foal is, is in the middle of things and eats pleasurably right next to the others. The piglets belonging to the so-called schnitzel appear to have a very healthy appetite. One of them is not doing quite so well, despite mum's 14 teats for nine young. Yeah, he's a bit smaller, and just as siblings can sometimes be, the smallest has a rough time if they have a communal scrap. He hasn't quite got as much strength as the eight others. Personally, I think he's the cleverest pig of them all because he's not going to end up in sausages as soon as his uh, well-fed siblings. In addition to mother's milk, the piglets are also offered solids. Today, we have soybean meal and bread rolls. Dinner is served. I 
There's another one there. Hey, come in. Hurry up. For it to thrive, it's important that a piglet eats specially prepared food full of protein and minerals. But Mama Schnitzel's featherweight insists on a diet of baked white flour. He just won't learn. All he wants are bread rolls. Well, I'd say they just taste better. The lion babies will have to make do without their mother for a while. So that vet Adriana can inoculate them in safety, the big cats were locked out. The serum is supposed to counteract typical cat diseases, such as pan leukopenia and cat colds. Locked outside, of course, lion mother Tembezi cannot know whether Tony and Adriana are up to no good or not. Understandably, she hammers against the door. Of course, the mother doesn't know what's going on. She just wants to defend her children. In a minute, when they're all back together outside, her anxiety will evaporate. Wow, he's quite heavy. Yeah. Weight-wise, I'd say it's a male. The second of the two jabs contains a vaccine against rabies. At the same time, they check each animal to ensure that their existing microchip with the identification number is readable. It could have shifted. Next, please. Yes, it's all OK. Oh, it's not. I was a bit too hasty. The lion babies are just three and a half months old and still have their milk teeth. Strong milk teeth. They can really bite. I don't want that to happen. You can forget your hand if they get you. As they're already on a meat diet, their teeth are full of germs. You really have to be careful. After a quarter of an hour, all of the four baby cats are inoculated. The next step is the easiest, reuniting the young with their mother. First the four little ones together, then up goes the slider. Outside, mum is waiting with their auntie and brother. For Keeper Tony, this is the nicest moment. Lion babies don't only suckle with their own mother. All of the females in a pack that have young of their own and accordingly have milk look after the babies together. They bring them up together too. Shortly, the pack will receive a sack full of surprises from the keeper. Sacred baboons live in harem groups together. How do they do it? Each male forms a group of females around himself and looks after them and the mutual offspring. The males weigh twice as much as the females and have long, silvery fur. They often argue over women or over food. Nothing new there, then. It's Monday. Over the weekend, they were given a lot of sweet things by the visitors, and today they're enjoying pulling the leaves off the branches and eating them to balance out all the bananas and oranges. Several harem groups have joined to form one big union. Controversy is predestined. Only the highest-ranking males set the agenda. They often quarrel so diligently that in the meantime, the females and young animals manage to snap the best food morsels. Right now, there are 51. 
The most recent one's at the front. She's holding him in her arms. That's the youngest, born last Sunday. There are 11 adult males, each with a family, 35 adult females, and the rest are kids. The newborn have black fur and weigh less than a kilogram at birth. A female has just one baby at the end of a pregnancy. The young have a good life expectancy as the large group with the aggressive males protects them well from predators. In the wild, they can live to the age of 20 or 25, but a lot of ours are 30 and older. Even the oldest can be playful every now and again, especially when Uwe has put something new into the enclosure. Naturally, it first has to be quarrelled over. It's like with neighbours. Sometimes they argue, but generally they get on. They've known each other for so long, and quarrelling is part and parcel of an ape's existence. They're just not happy without conflict. Like some humans. Normally, owls sleep during the daytime, but not snow owls. They are day active and hunt while it's light. Despite the time of day, the youngest owl chick isn't fit. Volker calls in Michael, the vet, to examine poor little Boo Boo. His head has a tilt to it. Sometimes it seems as if it might be too heavy for his body. You hungry? Do you want more to eat? One of his eyes is open, the other's still closed. I'm trying to feel if there's something wrong with its throat, because its head's crooked, maybe because of the way it lay in the egg. We'll wait a couple of days. Most of the time, it'll just adjust itself. Volker will feed Boo Boo himself for a few days and take him home with him after work. When his stronger siblings leave the nest for their first outdoor trips, he'll bring him back to the owl mother. Hopefully, she will feed her youngest child large amounts of the food that the snow-white father owl brings her. And you're supposed to be a bird of prey, eh? <laughs> Hold your head up straight. You're nice and warm. What are you chirping about? Oh, you're such a sweetie. OK, let's wait a while and then try to reunite it with his family, OK? Yeah. All right. OK, bye. Tschüss.